For the first time in eight years, the TVG Pacific Classic will be run on the dirt. What's on the line? A million dollars and a spot in the Breeders' Cup Classic starting gate. She might be one of the best mares this sport has ever seen. Can she cement her legacy by beating the boys? Beholder once again, a scintillating performance today. Just never gave them a chance. Cantering home under Gary Stevens and the Clementel Hood. This South American import is looking for his first grade one win. Homeward bound in the San Diego appealing tail. Catch a flight coming fast. Appealing tail hanging on. Appealing tail catch a flight and up to win it. Does Victor Espinosa have another ace up his sleeve? Hard aces strikes the front. Opportunity on the outside. Catch a flight is back to third. It's hard aces as they run to the wire in a thriller. Very close. And he's struggling to find his A game. But on any given day, he can beat anybody. Fired, close to New York, California Pole. Here's the finish. Fired, fired, holds on. The $1 million TVG Pacific Classic, Saturday at Del Mar. A field of 10 set to go in the $1 million TVG Pacific Classic down at Del Mar tomorrow, Saturday. Great card. Got the Pat O'Brien. Good supporting races, but the classic, obviously the highlight, and what makes it even more interesting this year, is the presence of the top filly in the country, Beholder, who's the morning line favorite on Russ Hudak's line at odds of 5-2. to two. She'll be taking on the boys, including her stablemate, Catch of Flight. Joining us right now via telephone is the man who trains the top two choices for this year's Pacific Classic, Richard Mandel, and Richard, my first question to you is, you told Brittany Yurton in the winner's circle after Clement Hirsch you were thinking about running in a classic. Obviously, that was not a spur-of-the-moment uh, decision. How long had you been tinkering with that idea before the Clement Hirsch, even? Uh, you know, for the last, you know, all, of, all through this year, watching her uh, in the races that we ran against the mares, it just, she was so dominant. I thought, you know, somewhere along the line, we need to step it up and try something a little, a little stronger. Saying that, I could have shipped her back east, but I've had trouble shipping her, and she doesn't do well. So uh, I figured best to just try something like this here. You haven't run fillies against the boys all that often. In fact, in thoroughbred racing, it's not common. But from covering a lot of quarter horse racing, a lot of harness racing, it's no big deal in those sports. Phillies beat the boys all the time in the quarter horse racing. Recently in the Hamiltonian, the filly was one of the top two choices. Why isn't thoroughbred racing trainers, owners, whoever are more reticent to, to tackle the boys with top-class fillies, Richard? Mainly because we have a lot of opportunities to run them in their own category. Mm -hmm. You know, in Europe and, and like you say, the quarter horses and the trotters, I don't know it as a matter of fact, but I'm guessing they probably don't have big races for mares that are anywhere equal to what the Colts run for. Uh, and so they probably just go ahead and take their shot and 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 rightfully so we we probably hurt ourselves a little bit by making too too many fine categories and keep horses from doing that sometimes how has she done since the clement hirsch uh, we're getting a good look at her right now just walking around the barn area how's she doing how's she doing physically and, and what have you seen from her since the clement hirsch i think she's at her best i think the race did her good she's came out good as she can be uh and I think it's time to try something like this. I've put a little bit more into her for this going into the Clement Hirsch, uh, basically I basically because I had this in mind. Uh, you know, I worked her a couple of miles rather. You know, I didn't work her the shorter works and uh, a little bit slower and steady rather than quick and fast. And and it was kind of a design to to get to where we are tomorrow and hopefully in the best shape we can be. Gary Stevens rides are obviously Richard and you guys have had a lot of success together with lots of good horses. Is there a difference? Uh, I'm talking game plan and paddock strategy when you are taking on the boys or the Philly as far as strategy and, and you and Gary talk about, or is it just like any of the race as far as you guys discussing the best way to win the race and attack the opposition? Just another race. No difference at all. That is Philly versus a boys. A little more money. <laughs> I, I said this the other day on the air, Rich, and I, I caught myself because I laughed. I said, the other man, Dolores, catch a flight. When's the last time he was referred to as your other horse? How is he? Yeah, he's doing great, <laughs> yeah. And, and and deserves to be paid attention to. Um, you know, she is a very special horse, but but he's becoming one, and, and God, you couldn't ask one to do much more than he's done this year. 
We just watched a, a video of his last win in, uh, in the San Diego, and I forgot how how game he was and how much heart he showed down the lane coming and getting those horses. How much has he progressed in the past couple of months, and is there still another step forward for him possible? You know, he just he just looks better, acts better, and runs better all the time. I'd say he's he's. We're hoping there's even more there yet. Has he surprised you maybe even a little bit on how far and how fast he's come? Yes, he surely did. Uh, um, you know, when he came, he'd, he'd won a bunch of allowance races in Brazil with, you know, with very little money. I could run him in non runners of one of them made their claiming at the start of uh, Santa Anita. And as it turned out, the one he beat in there was a pretty good horse. I can't remember his name, but but he's been running against us in some of these stakes. He's pretty good, too. Um, but he hadn't proven himself to be a stake horse. But... You know, he surely has now. now. You've got Flavian Pratt riding on uh, Catch a Flight. Again, with having two horses in a race, and a lot of times when trainers have two in a race like this, one's 5-2 to two and one's 30-1. to one. It's, it's it's not the same. These are the two favorites. When you discuss strategy with Flavian Pratt, is that just totally separate from any discussion with Beholder and Gary Stevens and try to just let each guy ride their own race no matter who uh, the other horses are? No, they're both on, the own. They're both on their own, and uh, it's every man for himself. <laughs> like to hear that. That's the way to win. You've won three of these, Richard. It's been a while. Pleasantly perfect and gentleman. It, and, and every female for herself. Yeah, exactly. Everybody for themselves. <laughs> and Darren Go, three top class horses. Obviously, Darren Go was the horse that, you know, knocked off Cigar and ended that streak. Besides that, your, your favorite memory of the classic over the years, either with a horse you've won or just some memory of this race? Uh, it's just a great race. I mean, winning, beating Cigar and winning that race was, was, a lot of fun and excitement because we didn't expect to win. Uh, and when you're in that situation, you can have, you can loosen up and have a little more fun with it. When you run pleasantly perfect in there after he just won the Dubai Cup and the and the Breeders' Cup, you'd feel stupid if you didn't win. <laughs> yeah, well, we all feel stupid plenty of times in this game without any help. Uh, one final thing, Richard, it's funny. You and I talked last weekend on the radio, and we were talking about the first horse you ever trained and the first horse you ever won with, Bad and Big. So I'm on. No, that was the first. No, the, he, no, he was one of my. He was the first really good horse I had. Not my first stakes winner, and surely not my first runner. My first runner was La Mesa. Oh, you told us bad and big last week. Did I? Well, <laughs> yeah. I might have been thinking of Beholder and not thinking too good. You know what made me think uh, of it? Because bad and big was a Loinkers Mile winner. That's that's why I brought that up. Because we did that race last year, and I forgot what a really good horse bad and big was. Yeah, he was, and he was my first really good horse. Um, but. And and one of the fondest that I have memories of because he put me, he had a lot to do with where I am today, I'm sure. You know, around a lot of good fillies and mares, Richard. I know you get asked this all the time, and it's very hard to compare horses from eras, different generations, different circumstances. But as of now, with Pacific Classic looming tomorrow, how, how high up is Beholder as far as fillies and mares you've been around in your training career? Uh, at this point, she's got to be the top. And and it's I hate to even say that, but you know, winning a Grade One at two, three, four, and five, mm. there aren't many have ever done that. So she just puts herself in a real special category. We'll see if she can add another uh, a, a piece to that tomorrow at the Pacific Classic. She is the five to two morning line choice. Richard, thank you very much for your time. Good luck with both Beholder and Catch a Flight, and a safe run in the Pacific Classic. Thank you, Richard Mandela. Hall of Fame trainer sitting out the Philly Beholder, the 5-2 to two morning line favorite for tomorrow's $1 million TVG Pacific Classic.